If you like the build quality and aesthetic of my van, the Gala van, you'll love this next tour. TJ Rivers combined a love of building with industrial design training to create a spectacular van build company, Venture House. In the next video, we get to tour their shop where they've built over 20 vans. But in this video, we get to see their gorgeous first build. This van features a pass-through design that allows easy access to both the sliding door and the back doors, a huge kitchen with a propane range, lots of smart storage, and a unique sliding bed design you're gonna wanna see. Hey everybody, I'm TJ from Venture House Van Conversions here in Evergreen, Colorado, just outside of Denver. This was a project that it was our first in-house build that we designed and built. Come on inside. The first thing you'll notice is there's a ton of cherry. Uh, this van uses uh, cherry face frames throughout along with a cherry and maple butcher block countertop and a cedar slat ceiling. The walls are built with a birch ply. It is not Baltic birch, just birch, uh, using an ultra low VOC adhesive. Uh, it's insulated with dedum. We now use wool. I went with this pass-through layout that allows you to open the doors up and really be a part of your outdoor experience. That also allowed for a massive kitchen. When you flip up the end over here, the kitchen measures just over 11 feet end to end, but it doesn't take up any real extra space. A lot of it can be used for day-to-day -day activities. You can use this as a workspace. You can pull out this table over here for additional area. The sink can turn out the door and be used as a shower. There is a cutting board that fits in here. I chose a flat top stove. So this space could also be used if you needed to set something down. I made sure the refrigerator was mounted flush with the counter height to give a seamless experience. This is a Dometic dual zone. Uh, it's great, it's very efficient, and since it's top loading, every time you open it, that cold air stays inside. We laminated a piece of steel uh, for the backsplash. You might be wondering why we didn't go with stainless. Stainless actually isn't magnetic, and we wanted this to be a place for them to add their own flair and character. Uh, you can see they have these little mint containers that have been repurposed for seasonings and uh, some little knickknacks from the road. Above this, you have some cabinets. They have gas struts on either side. It's especially important we have a wide cabinet to put two gas struts on it. If there's only gas strut on one side, it'll put a uh, cattywampus pressure on the hinges and prematurely wear out your strut. Something else I see a lot of people doing is uh, they install the gas struts backwards. You actually want this part above the thinner part. So every time you close it, you re-lubricate this cylinder. We have push button latches. This is a sort of cannery style drawer or pantry style drawer. Awesome way to use a narrow space. In this build, we prioritize space over aesthetics. There are a few little uh, disagreements between the heights of things down here, but we absolutely maximize the amount of space. Over here, we've got the Dometic with the oven. The propane is stored down here, along with an explosive gas detector that detects three things. It's gonna be natural gas, propane, and carbon monoxide. Coming down here, we have what I call the wardrobe. This is sort of a multifunctional space to store outdoor equipment, accessible, organized area, to keep everything you need for when you need to get out of the van. We love these slam latches, highly recommend them. They're hands down the best latch you can put in a van. In fact, this one thing the client has not enjoyed is these push button latches. And at the time we really liked the, the look and aesthetic, but they just don't offer a large enough grip. And the mechanical 
uh, inner workings that cause this to go up and down really only works if this is facing up. If these are oriented sideways, they get a lot of problems. Up top is our long cabinet. This is great for bigger items. If you ever want to put like a skateboard or camping chairs, things like that. And then down here, we have the toilet. It has a little pin. And it just slides on out like that. Behind it, we have the electrical system. This includes a 1200 watt inverter, a 200 amp hour battery, uh, and distribution, shore power connection, all of that good stuff. It actually runs all the way through the back here into these two cabinets. Really, the only part of the electrical system that's oriented over here is the inverter and our breaker box for the 120 system. These are actually race car wheels to the, the cedar and cherry wood. It fits in fantastic. This is the crux of the build. I've seen a lot of those slat matching beds that slide out and are supported by the entire face. And that was interesting, but I thought it could be a little better. I wanted to build something that was just one piece of foam. To take the bed down, there's one pin back here. I just pulled that out. It uses a cam functionality to clamp so it doesn't vibrate out when you drive. And then by pulling in the center, and pushing in the back, the bed comes down and that's it. It's four feet wide by six feet long and uh, plenty big for most people. This is a uh, hemp, organic hemp cover with a non-slip backing. To put the bed back up, you get to take a ride. It's kind of fun. So you reach back here and grab this string. And there you are. The bed's back. The client decided to add what they call recline mode. So instead of having it fully in, there's actually a second point for the pin. So you can have the back just ever so slightly reclined for a more comfortable seating position. So this design allows for storage to be underneath the bed. There's three drawers down here, all about 19 by 19 inches. Having on drawer slides really changes the game. I've seen so many of this type of bed that slides out and it's always a pain to drag out the face across the floor. It's not very sturdy. And this was just a experiment that ended up going right. It did take one revision to get it all dialed in, but we're really happy. And uh, our most recent van actually even has version three of this. And we're excited to begin offering version three as a product to DIYers who would like a simple turnkey bed solution. This little area, it's small, but very important. It does a lot. Uh, one thing that some people might overlook is you need room for the front seat to move backwards into a recline. So we wanted to make sure we left a flexible space to accommodate that. This is also a great place to install one of these marine table mounts. It's very versatile. By flipping up the kitchen wing and using this space, two people can have a breakfast or a dinner and both have stunning views of the outside. This table can also be used, as we said before, as sort of an auxiliary space for using this as an office. And possibly my favorite feature, you can actually turn this all the way up front and have a beautiful cherry and maple center console as you uh, sip your milkshakes down I-70. We have a little tray the clients added. They also added this cup holder, which I think was so smart. And it covers up the little hole, which is used to access this cubby. This is a great cubby to put shoes in or dirty things, things that you might uh, not always be using. There's also an outlet back here with USB and 120. I'm sure some people will talk about how inverting to 120 and then back to 12 is inefficient, but the clients really like the convenience of having that 
multifunctional outlet. Also, note, fire extinguisher, always have one in your van. Also, a fire alarm and a carbon monoxide detector. There's magnets here and corresponding washers. This allows this simple lift-off design to be quiet while you're driving. Those magnets prevent vibration from turning it into a little drum. That's something you might want to consider in your build. If you have something unsecured, magnets are a great way to secure it. Well, another small detail uh, is this curtain track. It comes with tape that snaps on to these nylon sliders that then fit into this T-slot style track. You can sew it on to any fabric and it creates a very low profile connection with almost no gap. You can even put this down here if you want to eliminate light leak if you're going for a very stealth style. Over here, you can see we trimmed out the metal with the automotive fabric. This is a great way to finish those complex and curvaceous areas of the van. Do this at the beginning of your build. Just go ahead, buy the carpet, buy the adhesive, get, get going with it, and you'll be surprised at how easy it is. And the Pro Masters, we also like to pull these styrofoam blocks and carpet them to match. It's a nice little touch to make it feel that much more finished. I will say, on the topic of these styrofoam blocks, the side airbags are directly behind them. It's important that you don't cover this area with wood or another hard material because in the case of an accident, that can turn to shrapnel. For the ceiling, we decided to do birch with this cedar slat design. We love cedar as it gives a nice aroma in the summertime and is a beautiful one to work with. We brought that slat design into the wall to create a sort of transitional space that helped open up the van. We also use cedar to trim out our max fan. Don't be afraid to toss that plastic shroud and make something custom. Uh, it really was not too bad and uh, added for a nice aesthetic touch that ties the ceiling into the fan. We have six gallons of fresh water under the sink. Really, it's a seven gallon tank, but six usable gallons. Then the client also stores six additional gallons at the rear to allow for some auxiliary water use. All of that just comes right out the side here. This is actually a door. We left a little space here to allow it open. And in here, we have what the client calls their outdoor storage. Uh, they keep their shore power connections, their leveling blocks. And then down below is the water tanks. Simply unhook this, pull the hose out, and you can remove your tank. They're held in by this little block. So the client chose to go with a telescoping ladder. They like the flexibility it gave them. Coming up here, there's a 80-20 roof rack with a marine grade paint on outdoor decking. There's some little guardrails on it to keep it contained. In the back, there's just 200 watts of solar. I wanna thank TJ for sharing their client's van with us. I am so impressed with the knowledge and craftsmanship at Venture House. If you liked this video, please hit the thumbs up button and share it with someone else. And if you want to see more van and rig tours, van life tips, and other videos to help women get on the road, hit subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. I appreciate your thoughtful comments, and if you'd like to join in deeper conversation, I invite you to join our Facebook group, Gal Adventurers. This is Joni with the Galavan. Enjoy your journey.